that's helpful to your, your Columbus facility. Is that correct? We have, that is very correct. We have, we have had such wonderful experiences with our universities and schools around the area to develop people and to put them into great careers and jobs. You're absolutely correct. Thank you very much. More questions later. Senator Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Gelsinger. So again, these are interesting statistics. Uh, only 12% of chip manufacturing here in the US, primarily because other countries have provided industrial policy, basically, and they provided financial incentives for your industry to move over overseas. Did, did the U.S. chip industry, did you ever consider, as you were moving all this manufacturing overseas and the, just the risk to your own industry, not to mention national security? Can you turn your... I'm very proud to say that uh, Intel has remained primarily on U.S. soil uh, over this uh, period of time. And the vast majority of our uh, investments are in U.S. and European uh, soil with a very small amount uh, in Asia. Where really what's happened is the rest of the industry has moved uh, dramatically over this period of time, largely responding uh, to these incentives that uh, we've uh, described. You know, of, uh, of our investments, well over half of them land on U.S. soil with approximately a third in Europe. We've been one of the few companies that have remained highly dedicated to U.S. R&D and manufacturing investments over the entirety of our 53-year history. The trends that we've described have clearly affected the rest of the industry in a most dramatic way. So of the 12% produced in the U.S., how much is that, what percentage of that 12% is Intel? About half. About half. Um, you know, obviously this would be considered unfair trade practices, correct? When you've got different countries subsidizing industry, putting it, you know, at a competitive advantage because of government subsidies. So I guess there's two ways of approaching that. You can slap tariffs on that. Or you can, I guess, try and your own, start your own industrial policy here in the United States, which, which is apparently the path we're taking. Does that pretty well sum things up? Well, and we'd also emphasize that without such actions, right, you know, we see that uh, foreign countries, as we've already right, indicated in the testimony, are taking very aggressive steps. And they, we, they view and understand the criticality of semiconductors underlaying every aspect of the digital uh, future. And that's why we speak with such urgency and passion on this topic to be restored in American soil. This is foundational to every other industry and every other aspect for it. And thus, we believe it's uh, justified to take such steps as the CHIPS Act, as the FABS Act. And now, right, we would say that this industry, one that was born in the United States, right, you know, this is our industry that underscores every aspect of humanity looking forward. Now is the time for action. I think my concern is when government starts attempting to allocate capital, it just screws things up. It doesn't do it very efficiently or effectively. So again, I'm concerned as, as opposed to pushing the unfair trade practice route, going that route, to just, well, let's join in. Let, let's engage in the same type of activity. Um, ends up with a misallocation of capital. Are you concerned about that? Yeah, because, you because you have government picking the winners and losers in this case. Mm -hmm. You know, given what we've seen worldwide, you know, the 30-year trend is dramatic, right? These actions are not overnight actions that have been taken by foreign uh, nations. While uh, clearly there are concerns on how capital is allocated, right, you know, without such steps, our industry will be further undermined. We will lose critical mass, I believe, in the near future, and we will never have the opportunity to restore this industry on American soil. So That's you, why we're here. Can you give me just sort of the macro numbers we're talking about here? How many dollars of capital have been provided in what I would consider unfair trade practices by our overseas competitors? I mean, how, how many hundreds of billions of dollars? Well, just, just in the last uh, year, we've seen uh, the Europeans suggest $45 billion. The Koreans suggest $100 billion. The Chinese suggest over $100 billion. These are very significant investments. And what we're seeking in the CHIPS Act is to unleash public, private, right, leveraged investments where these investments would unleash, you know, three to four dollars for every dollar that's put into it, as well as the research investments are long term, right? These are, you know, our industry was born out of DARPA investments uh, decades ago. These are long term investments as well as near term reversal in the manufacturing footprint that is most critical to the world. 
There is plenty of capital available to invest in semiconductors in the U.S., though, correct? There's I mean, plenty I mean, it's, of, it's not like we're short of capital. There's plenty of it's capital. It's just that available. there's unfair trade practices being engaged in by other countries. You know, other countries have seen the criticality of this industry and have invested in it as seed corn for so many other aspects of the technology industry. That's why they've chosen to take such practices aggressively. And we, you know, see that such actions need to be taken in the U.S. to restore this industry. Now's the time to act. It's almost mutually assured destruction, isn't it? It's going to be a race to the bottom. Again, I'm, 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 a, I'm a real unabashed free trader. I, I don't like tariffs. But I... I I almost hate government allocation of capital worse. Well, as we think about things like tariffs and other export policies, by putting those in place, we're actually further hurting American industry because other countries are not putting such limitations or practices in place on their industry. So to say that it's not helping our industry, right, you know, but hurting it instead, right, you know, is very, uh, is very odd logic. We need to take steps to restore American competitiveness, to improve our trade practices and export practices. Uh, globally. And to do that, right, you know, partnering with our uh, friends globally is critical as well. Now's the time to act or this industry may never be back on American shores. Uh, I'm, I'm fully aware that tariffs hurt American consumers. I, I got that. But again, I'm, I'm just concerned about engaging in this uh, race to the bottom in terms of now government, government across the world is going to be doing the capital investment for a particular industry. I, I just think that long term is not a good good solution. Thank you, Senator. Um, I'm going to go next, but Senator Wicker wanted to make a quick well, comment. Uh, just to follow up on something you said, Mr. Gelsinger, uh, in, 